international local man decided to make a pair of cowboy boots for himself. Designed the boots, cut out all of the pattern pieces, did everything I was supposed to do, and then I found out that I had made a grave mistake. 70 years old man. Welcome to Bomo Bespoke. So why am I even publishing this video? Why not just trash everything and simply start afresh? Uh -huh. Well, I didn't make mistake on every step of the process involved. So I just want to show you the part where I made mistakes so that you don't have to make the same mistake that I made. And then I also want to share with you some of the things that I did, indeed, and in fact do right so that you can all learn from it. So I'm going to show you some of the rudimentary principles of boot making and this is not restricted to cowboy boots. You can deploy these principles for all types of boots. So of course you know with every pair of shoe we start with the min form. To get the min forms we got our last copies, place them on top of each other and with that we generate the average which of course is called the min form. Now I already told you that this video ended up in me realizing that I made a grave mistake. So this video is going to be very very fast paced so learn what you can while I speed through the process until I get to the mistake and then while we are along the way I will also show you a few tips about how to make boats. Of course excluding the mistake that I made which I will point out to you so that you don't repeat it. So let's start. We start out by drawing a right angle and then marking the heel height of the boot on the vertical line of the right angle. We place our mean form on top of that heel height, placing the ball of the mean form on the horizontal line of the right angle and then trace out the mean form. Of course, we've drawn in our van point. Next, we are going to find our instep. The instep is one quarter of the last length. The last length of this last is, I think, 34 cm. So 34 divided by 4 gives us 8.5. So from the van point going upward, we mark 8.5, and that's the instep. From the counterpoint, we will draw a right angle from the baseline and then also from the back height. Then we draw a line from the heel to the ball and then find a parallel line that runs parallel to that line that we just drew from the instep. So that line runs parallel to the line that runs from the heel to the ball. Then we'll measure the distance from the heel to the instep, divide that by two and mark that distance on the line that we just drew earlier on. Then a line running across that point will be the center from where we are going to find the height of this boot. So I wanted the height of this boot to be about 23 to 24 cm, 26 cm actually. So from the feather edge of the mean form on that center of gravity line, we marked in 26 cm. Then drawing a right angle from about 1 cm away from downward away from the instep, we found the forward shin area of the boot. And then using our own French curves, or again, we would also curve in the back part of the boot from the counterpoint to connect to the line that runs from the back height. So up to this point, this is your basic method for boot construction. Now the problem is in deciding the opening of the shaft of my ankle boot. I should have factored in the width of my feet so that it goes in. All the while that I've been making boots, I've been making boots that have either elastics in case of Chelsea boots or zippers in case of other types of ankle boots. So I forgot that because you open up those things or you stretch the elastic, it gives enough room for your feet to enter into the boot and I did not factor in that distance enough. I actually wanted cowboy boots that were very very close to my skin. Basically um, fitted type of cowboy boots. Having not added enough space for my feet to go in, this boot was pra is practically unwearable. So it looks good. It's 
absolutely beautiful but my feet can't go in and it cannot be worn so it's a museum piece it's something that i basically have to keep in my workshop and just stare at it and bemoan so this is exactly exactly where i made the mistake so the wheat at the top there is absolutely so minuscule my feet will not be able to go in um from that top right there and that's the big mistake that i made so when you're designing your own cowboy boots don't make it but of course if at that center line that you see in the center there i decide to add a zipper i'm guessing that if the zipper goes down um towards the feather edge enough i may be able to still salvage this boot i'll try that over the weekend and see if that is something that works so i will basically have to cut up the seam around the center of this boot and try to add a zipper there if it works ladies and gentlemen i'll be grateful because this is actually premium good leather that i used in cutting out all of the pattern pieces and i deeply regret that i didn't see this coming so when you're designing yours there's a reason why cowboy boots have very wide shafts now not being that i'm not an expert in making western boots i have learned the hard way these things happen so ladies and gentlemen this is the design this is when i cut the standard and this is so beautiful leather man kai well it happens you live and you learn so see my alligator that I used in making the vamp and the quarters for the boot. And all of the pattern pieces, including the lining, all well cut out. I just had to stitch it. And then, in fact, before I started stitching, I already knew something was off. At this point, I was really asking myself, are you sure this thing is going to work? And then did a test lasting and i realized my feet was never going to go in there so like i said i'll try and add like a a zipper in the middle there and see if that will salvage this boat if it doesn't i'll just make this one foot and keep it as a museum piece thank you ladies and gentlemen i'll correct my mistakes and come back in another video but until i see you guys next time god bless you peace